welcome to the Cottage Notebook Podcast. I'm your host Nadia and if you like your craft podcast with a little bit of gardening on the side then this podcast is for you. Coming up on today's show I am joined by the talented Jenny Sisk of Ten House Yarns. So it's time for you to make a cuppa, grab a project that you're working on and let's enjoy today's show. First of all, a big hello if you're a new listener, come on in and have a look around the blog, Ravelry and social media. You can find me on all platforms as at Cottage Notebook. It's lovely to have all of you returning listeners back again and for joining in with the show. A huge thank you to everyone who's joined in and shared the podcast and posts they love and for all the support with the previous podcasts of Emma of Woolly Mammoth Fibres and Countess of Blaze. If you do have time and you like the show, I would love it if you could pop over to iTunes and leave a review so that you can help this podcast reach even more craft-loving people. And if you do like it, then please share the podcast on whatever social media that you use and let us know what you think. Secondly, this podcast is now supported by a wonderful group of patrons. And a special shout out to JST Knitwear Designs and Popcorn and Crocodiles. You can find links to Jen's fabulous designs and Emily's beautiful yarn notebook in today's show notes. So please do pop over and check them out and tell them that I sent you. If you would like to support the blog and podcast, then please do pop over to patreon.com forward slash cottage notebook, where depending on the tier that you choose, you can have access to a monthly hangout, private podcasts, a monthly garden newsletter and more. Now, the first bit of housekeeping before we get to today's interview is to announce the winner of that gorgeous skein of Woolly Mammoth Fibres yarns. And the winner is Kim aka Kreitzler on Ravelry and I really hope I said that right. So um, you will be receiving a DM on Ravelry from the lovely Emma about getting that skein of yarn to you. The second bit of business is um, to do with the Titsite Collective and um, the link to my charity of choice uh, which is Friends of the Elderly. Uh, you can find on today's show, I'm doing that through iDonate um, online. Um, so if you like any of the content that we create on the Cottage Notebook blog, podcast, social media, any of the things that you've been enjoying, then please do spend some time, click that link and um, show some support for such a, a wonderful charity. One of the uh, things that I am hosting in uh, the Ravelry group this year, this summer, uh, from now until September 1st, we are having a frog or finish board. So if you happen to have a whip pile that you really don't know what to do with, then this is a little bit of kind of fun and games and support um, to help you deal with that before um, the knitting season really kicks off in September. I don't know why uh, September seems to be the month where I really get my knitting mojo back, but it seems like it's the same for a lot of the knitting groups that I tend to frequent. So um, if you would like some help with your whip pile, pop on over to the Cottage Notebook Ravelry group, like I sound like I know what I'm saying, and you can join in with the threads. And if you post uh, your FO or your frog and your original yarn, um, you can be in with the chance to win a gorgeous shawl pin from Garden Witch Designs. It's really pretty. And there are also two skeins of Indie Dyed Yarn up for grabs too. Um, the closing date for that is the 1st of September and you can find more information over on the Ravelry group. And also I think I'm going to be doing a YouTube vlog which will be going live soon. So if you don't follow me over on YouTube, do pop over and search for Cottage Notebook and hit subscribe. Our last bit of info before we pop over to Jenny's podcast is um, to tell you a little about um, the UK Hand Knitting launches the Commit to Knit in August 2018. The campaign it encourages knitters and crocheters to make one item for charity. There are 6 million people who can knit or crochet in the UK and if each of them made one item for charity this would mean a massive boost in the items to sell to raise money for charities to distribute to those in need for warm clothes and blankets in the UK and abroad. Last year, crafters from all over the country got involved and this year the event will take place throughout September and UK Hand Knitting is calling on knitting groups 
across the UK to get involved. I understand this is an Irish podcast, but there is a lot of you listening from the UK, so this is relevant to you. To celebrate the Commit to Knit, the team at UK Hand Knitting has created seven specially designed free patterns, including blankets, mitts, a hat, Christmas stockings, and a gorgeous teddy kindly donated by blogger Emma Varnum. The leaflet will be available as a free download from UK Hand Knitting website from mid-August. All knitting groups that register with UK Hand Knitting will now also be entered into a monthly draw to win a pack of yarn from August. Groups can register by following the link in today's show notes. And any charities who are looking for knitted or crochet items are invited to get in touch by emailing info at ukhandknitting.com. If you would like more information, you can also contact Juliet Bernard at Blue Bear. And the link for all of that information will also be in today's show notes. Now joining me on today's show is Jenny Sisk, who is the talented dyer behind Townhouse Yarns, which is just four years old this year. In this time, Jenny has been featured in magazines such as Simply Crochet and worked with such talented designers as Carol Feller, Wooly Wormhead and Justine Lerowska, to name just a few. She was also one of the three talented dyers who were part of the Irish Yarn Club before launching her own Irish specially milled base, Ulla, at Woolen in 2018. For everyone who knows Jenny, she is fun, energetic and loves colour and they will all agree that she has managed to infuse her personality into each of her hand-dyed yarns. So without further ado, I leave you with the gorgeous Jenny Sisk. Um, Good morning, Jenny. Uh, Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, Nadia. Thanks for having me. It is a beautiful morning. It is. It is. Um, for those listeners who may not know you, can you give us a little bit of introduction to um, yourself and your background, please? Yes. Um, so, as you said, my name is Jenny and I dye Townhouse Yarns. But originally, I the, I suppose the beginning of it all started uh, with starting to work in This Is Knit, which is a family-run yarn shop in Dublin, run uh, by my mom and my sister, Jackie and Lisa. And um, I started basically uh, came in to cover a shift one weekend when they were short-staffed and I never left. <laughs> it's so true. What was, it is true. <laughs> it's true. Um, what was your um, introduction to knitting? Because obviously your mom and Lisa started this, isn't it? But you came on board a bit later. So what made you join in the team? Well, I'd, I'd, they'd bring knitting home and stuff like that. And I, I did show an interest before I joined. Um, I could do anything that was straight, square, you know, I couldn't fix my mistakes. It might, Lisa would cast on for me. Um, and it just, you know, she gave it to me as a way, I suppose, when uh, I think my son was in hospital and she brought it in. She was just like, you know, in case that, you know, you want to pass the time or whatever and so I'd done a little bit a small bit and then once I started to I suppose work in the shop uh, that's when I really had to learn you know and I I had to be able to advise customers and um on you know the different weights and the stitches and the techniques and stuff like that so I really had to throw myself into it quite quickly and I think like my second project was cabled and my third project was a lace shawl <laughs> you know I really uh yeah had to just dive right in yeah she she's making the sound um like it looked like it was easy I can guarantee it was Jenny went home came back with these projects and they were amazing and well finished and they were blocked it was amazing um, I also had you know people at the end of the phone <laughs> you know <laughs> Going, oh no so I had them to call on and I also like you know if I was coming into work and you know our other colleagues that were there uh, sorry you worked there too um like yourself and uh Maria and stuff like that it's like um I've made a mistake help show me what I've done wrong so I had really kind of on site wherever I was whether it be over my mom's or Lisa's or in work uh, help to steer me in the right direction so uh, Ten House Yarns is very much uh, your baby. So how long was it from working in This Is Knit to then the birth and foundation of Ten House Yarns? Oh, wow. I actually will have to think about that for a second. Was it two, three years? Two years? I want to say two. Two. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess two. I think it was two. I think it was. I'm going by the age of my daughter because I started, like I started working there. I think she was about a year and a half. 
and then like she's seven and a half now so if it's four two yeah I'm gonna say two so what was it that attracted you to becoming an indie dyer I think well there's a couple of different reasons I suppose that I wanted to do it uh like my background being hairdressing and I was always very interested in color and um being creative and hands-on and then you know obviously for the love of other hand dyes you know I was always admiring the ones that we had in this is knit and everything like that and also I think it was a little bit of you know this is knit was my mom and my sister's thing you know and it was a a kind of case of what can I what can what can I do to have my own little part in this you know so um an in-house brand was of hand dyed yarn was I suppose the the thing that I thought that I could give did you find it um hard to launch an in-house brand because obviously you have been working in this is it for a while you've seen the quality of indie dyers that were coming in yeah and um you guys have exceptionally high standards yeah. um, I was like if it wasn't good Lisa wasn't gonna let me put it on the yeah. shelf <laughs> um, kind of what I'm getting at. yeah so I think we we got a couple of bases in well first of all like she because she had died before and she was kind of going oh it's very labor intensive and I was going okay yeah no fine and um she kind of said you know would you want to try it obviously there was a, a trying out period before we launched you know and um, I think she had a dye your own sock yarn kit was it a Louie one and um so you know they had the perfect amount for you to use it was like you know mix this with water biscuit mix this with water and um she said go home and try that like and see what you think and I did and you know I went back to her and I was like I love this let's get more yarn let's get more dye you know and um there was a little bit more of a playing around period and stuff like that and like it's not like she came over and you know showed me all the tips and tricks like I basically went searching the internet and you know just playing around to teach myself how to do it and then when it was time to you know look at putting it on the shelves and we got lots of different samples and um looked at the fibers that we really liked and how they took the yarn and um you know did some testing on them and stuff like that like knitting swatches and yeah we went from there so it wasn't it, wasn't, it, it felt qu- quick but I don't think it was overly quick getting it out there so how did you uh I'm gonna ask a very kind of indie question at the moment but how did mm. you decide on the bases that you had to launch and what were they so I l- launched two at first or was that just one? Oh god we're going back now um well grafton i knew grafton was a merino cashmere nylon and i just loved the feel of it um it was different to the other hand dyed bases that we'd had in the shop um and so i think i just out of all the samples schemes that we had gotten that was the one that i'd myself fallen in love with i suppose um, so maybe there was a little bit of a selfishness <laughs> to which one, uh, but that was that was that one. And then do you remember Chatham? I don't do it anymore. Oh yeah. But it was like a twelve hundred meter uh, lace weight. Uh, I think it, it was merino and silk, but I think it was like an eighty twenty maybe. But it was um, that was the second base. So are there things that you wish you could tell yourself back then that you know now? Let me see, what would I tell myself? I think, I'm not sure what I would tell myself, but I don't think I'd do things any differently in in the way that I feel that I have kind of taught myself, um, the, like I've watched the growing of the brand and as I'm learning more and the styles have changed, I think I'm still in a little bit finding my way, but I feel that I've done that on my own and I can be proud of it. Does that make sense? It does. It definitely does. Um, Because Ten House Yarns is now four years in business. Mm -hmm. And in that time, your yarn has been used by um, indie designers and it's been featured in magazines. Um, So it's definitely something that you have built and you should be proud of that. I am. I am. I think like 
obviously I'm doing it not, not on I wouldn't say like on a budget but I don't have this big you know amount of cash that I can go and spend on advertising or anything like that and my social media game is terrible and I would completely <laughs> admit to that you know I was like radio silence for a week you know at a time but I'm not trying to push it I'm trying to let it kind of organically go where it goes um and I think because I'm doing it that way um I'm going at my own pace I suppose and I'm not throwing myself in the deep end too quickly yeah obviously I think right now I'm at the point where I'd be ready to move into a studio and maybe take on a staff member or two it's exciting it would be exciting. exciting um I'm all for that by the way like supporting you from back here um yeah you just want me to go over there yes I do <laughs> <Where> you <live. laughs> I tried to convince Carol to move to Betty's town too so <laughs> it would um, like it it would be it's still kind of a better commute than going into the city center from where I live to the shop and everything uh but closer to my home would be amazing for me <laughs> um one of the most I just I really really I'm crossing my fingers in the hope that there's a space um it's really hard to find a space for as an indie dyer as well because the requirements are you know you need your space you need water um yeah. light would be really nice um like i've been to see a few places and um there is a fantastic one in navan and it's really close to my house which is you know amazing um but it's just a little bit too expensive yep. um and then I've been to see one that, um, like, it's it, it's like a greenhouse. There's, you know, no air going through and, you know, but the price is a little bit better. And you're going, oh, you know, could I could I stand it for that? Going, no, no, it has to be right. If I'm moving anywhere, it has to be yep. perfect before the right price as well. I think a lot of a lot of people who have been going through the same growth would say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but also... I'm really excited to ask about this. Um, so at Woolen, before we get on to Woolen, um, you launched your latest base, which was Ulla, which is really something special. And it was a collaboration oh, yeah. project with LB. So could you tell us about that, please? Yeah. So um, so yeah, me and Lisa were at a trade show uh, going around and having a look at what was on offer. And Studio Donegal were there. And um, so we got talking to Tristan about the possibility of um, kind of collaborating with them, with getting uh, the, something milled by them and then me dyeing it. And, um, you know, he's a wealth of information. He really is. Um, so we spoke at length about uh, the different options that he thought were going to work for what we wanted and that he would send us some samples. And uh, he did. And this was, I think this was the longest thing I've ever had in the works because I think it was well over a year ago that we spoke to him and um, he sent the samples. So he did send me a couple, like you've got your natural base and then there was a a grey base too. And I dyed both of them to see which one I prefer. So we did go for the natural base. And um, then we decided that obviously woolen would be the perfect time to launch it. Um, so I ordered as much as he had <laughs> available. <laughs> They're like, we have so many and so many and six schemes. I was like, give me them all. <laughs> and um, yeah, started uh, to dye those. And then once we knew that that was in the works, I think that, um, I think Lisa was talking to Albina for some reason. And um, the collaboration with her happened then for her to design a pattern in Ulla. Uh, to be released as well with Woolen. So it was all very exciting. And um, it's something, the, the base is very different from what I would usually do. Um, it is, you know, it's non-superwash. It's, there's no nylon for a fingering. There's, it's a pure wool. And all my other bases would be like silk with cashmere and merino and, you know, much softer uh, bases. So I was excited to try something new and add a different aspect of yarn to my range. Um, and is it a two ply? A oh, sorry, it's a fingering weight. And um, Albina designed a beautiful sweater in it as well, didn't she? She did. Scale Gras, which is love story in Irish. Yeah. 
It's a really, really delicate lace uh, yoke. Um, I can see where she got the name, like Scale Graf, because like, it is so romantic. You know, you see some patterns sometimes and yeah, it screams romanticism to me. So it's beautiful. And it kind of suits the, the colours on that base as well, because they take really differently than the rest of your range, don't they? They do, yeah. Um, you get much kind of more softer um, tonal. Now, I can't, you know, get a, a fairly good speckle there. It's not as, um, they don't they don't strike as quickly, I suppose. Like the, the dye will kind of spread out a little bit uh, more than what it would on a superwash yarn. Um, but it is yeah it's possible to get speckles but i think it does it does work with the with the tonals really well and if people want to find out more about ulla and um what's happening with uh 10 house yarns of course they can do that at both uh 10 house yarns and over on this isn't it yeah so there is a, a blog post uh that was popped up there recently um giving a little bit of a recap with woolen but also with more information about the scale gra pattern and how uh, that came about and um, Lisa has a blog post up as well but you can view all the shades on the This Is Knit website under the Townhouse Yarns um, button. So on top of being an indie dyer and also working in This Is Knit I don't know if it was insanity or <laughs> whatever but you're also um, the team who brought wool in uh, which is Dublin's first yarn festival. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, me and Lisa were talking <laughs> and um, just, you know, it has been said many times by customers in the shop uh, that we should do one. And I think at the time that Lisa was at in her life, she was kind of going, I just don't have, you know, the brain space for it. Um, and if if we were going to do it, it had to be all of us together going, you know, yes we can you know definitely put on our crazy hats and do it um and so it came about i think last september uh that we had the conversation and i think lisa was kind of going oh maybe we'll do a small one uh <laughs> and i was going oh yeah but you'd have to have this and she's going okay maybe that and i go oh but you have to have this and it just kind of steerolled uh from there um, a city centre location was what we were thinking first, but it just didn't work out that way with um, with parking, with, uh, you know, spaces mm -hmm. for the vendors to be able to unload and reload. So we were at the mercy of what venue we could find, really, at the end of the day. And um, so that's when we found Alsa and figured that we could do it on a little bit of a larger scale. And... And that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> For a first year, I think we were a little batty, but sure. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Exactly. And are you allowed to mention Will in 2019? You just did. <laughs> well, no, I know the dates are <laughs> no, launched no. on the website, so that's the okay. The dates are launched, yeah. Um, I can, I'm not sure what I can tell you. Uh, we do have teachers lined up. We do have some vendors lined up um, and it's happening. So that's what I can tell you. I think I can tell you maybe that the social night will be a little bit different. You won't hear a thing. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and if people want more information on Woolen, they can pop over to the website. Isn't that right? Yeah, absolutely. Do sign up for the newsletter, yes, that's the best way to find out uh, things as they are uh, announced. But it's also, uh, you'll find out first. So if you're signed up for the newsletter, because usually it's about two days later before that's made kind of public, public on social media and stuff like that. That's kind of important for like tickets and stuff like that, I noticed this year. Oh, yes, for tickets, for class tickets mm -hmm. and um, all the good things. And how, how did you find dividing your time between uh, Townhouse Yarns, Woolen, and of, obviously you're still a staff member in this, isn't it, as well? So yeah, how was that? Uh, um, we had to, I suppose, well, you know, I have my days that I have to do in the shop and um, I just delegated really my time. I knew what days I was working in the shop, but that wasn't going to change. I knew what my dying time was at home 
Um, that is changeable when you have children. But I, you know, I tried to stick to it as much as possible. Um, the idea was, oh, I do so much a week from like Christmas. But you no, know, that never happened. So I was literally for the last, I think, two months before Woolen, just trying to die like crazy. It literally, it took over my house. But we had regular meetings as well where we would all get together and kind of sit down and what was, you know, plan what we were going to do and, you know, make decisions. But like a lot of the admin was all on Lisa. And I'm so glad of that. (laughs) But that's what she is amazing at, you know. She really is. Like, I don't know how she deals with that. At one point, I'm fairly sure there was like WhatsApp, email, Trello boards. Uh volunteers oh everything (laughs) you have no idea you have no idea if a woman could run the world it is lisa (laughs) she's the president um oh that should be a thing um (laughs) one of the things i'm really excited about uh is the tits out collective because i've just seen the colors of your yarn um can you tell us about that yes so i had been aware of the issues the countess had had uh, before that brought around the uh the colorways of shit tea and tray bake. And if I want exposure, I'll get my tits out. And, you know, she did such a good thing for charity by raising all that money and through her swag and everything like that. So to see one of those colors be recreated, I suppose, I can understand where her, you know, why she would be upset about that and want to do something um, to turn that around. So that's what she is doing. It's fantastic. And there's now so many people involved. But she jumped on a live basically to explain the her whole crazy idea of having this tits out collective. And, you know, I remember going, you know, who's with me or am I just literally mad, <laughs> you know, doing this on my own? And I actually I, I wasn't watching it originally. My sister Lisa was. And um, when she was going, oh, who's doing it with me? And Lisa went, Townhouse Yarns from the Woolen account. <laughs> And uh, so Lisa texted me and she was like, oh, are you watching Countess? And I was going, what? No, no. She's like, oh, I just signed you up for this. I was going, sign me up for what? What are you talking about? So I jumped on, I saw, and um, I was like, absolutely, of course I'm on board. Like, um, even though I was offered up, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally on board. Anyway, I would have. If, if I was watching myself, I would have put myself out first. And um, so... I had a little bit of a panic attack then because I was going on holidays. <laughs> so I said, like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I'm going, going away for a week. I'm not going to be in my dye studio. And um, literally had to go. I had one day to kind of figure out what I was going to do and then throw it in a dye pot. And that's where my picture came from. So um, they will be up for pre-order if those sell out and yes they're going to be available on the this is knit website on july 1st that's sunday and um yeah but they'll be up for pre-order then after so hopefully we can make a lot of money for it like there are over 250 different makers involved yeah and you know the hashtag is blowing up like i'm going through all the pictures going want 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 (laughs) want that one want that one um but it's great to see how so many different dyers have interpreted the colorway and you know no two are exact like I know no two hand dyes are exactly the same but everybody has you really kind of pushed the boat and you know gone in all different directions with it but yet the colors are all there you know it's hilarious being that she never releases the recipe for her for her dyes Mm. and she did with this and then every single indie dyer went I can put my own spin on that and Mm -hmm. people who even dye kind of muted type they have an almost muted shade of those vibrant shades it's yeah it's beautiful and uh, the the bags and the jewelry and everything everything's just so gorgeous like I use a couple of different dyes to what she would um I do have some of the of the brand that she used but not all so I was I was mixing and stuff like that but I wasn't even expecting her to release the recipe like I was was reading the blog post and I was going what you know so it's just amazing I was like oh I don't I have two of those but if people are going to do this we're going to do it right um with the Tits Eye Collective yarn is that a limited edition just available for the month of July I don't know to be honest like I don't think she's going to put an all-out ban on 
you know, she's she's given the recipe away. <laughs> you know, we're doing this. Um, I'd have to check with her, but I don't think that she's going to kind of say you can't diet anymore. But I think it would always have to be a charity donation colorway. Yeah, yeah, like absolutely. Definitely. And there are yet more exciting things happening with Townhouse Yarns because the next time we see you in person is Yarn Porium, isn't it? Yeah, we'll be there. Um, it's a this is knit. It basically, are bringing um a lot of Irish base to to London. We're bringing the Irish to London. Mm-hmm. Um, so there will be a stand of all things yummy Irishness. So I think Studio Donegal. Um, I'll have some Townhouse there and. I'm not sure what else she's bringing. Would have to oh S twist maybe S twist might come along. And your emporium is in November. The start of November, yeah, the first weekend in November. So very excited for that. Are you doing anything between now and November? Sleeping. Yeah, I was gonna say any festivals <laughs> between now and November. Um, uh, I've nothing on the cards. Um, I think we've done so much this year because we've mm-hmm. been to um, Vogue in New York and we went over to Edinburgh for the day. Then we had Woolen. So I think uh, it's just a bit of taking stock now and uh, until November, until Yarn Emporium, I think. So uh, are you planning on doing more yarn festivals? Yeah, I think like I've only done a few up until now, but they're definitely um, the things that I would like to do more of. Uh, I have applied for another one before the end of this year um, uh, called Barcelona Knits. And so that will be exciting because it will be the first one, I suppose, further afield, you know, after Yarn, well, Yarn Porium first, which is like yeah, on a smaller scale. But, but Barcelona Knits, if we get in, is just townhouse. So that will be exciting. Ooh. And it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any advice for um, indie dyers who are starting out? Yeah, I think, you know, just don't push yourself. Go at your own pace to begin with. Um, like there's, there's a lot to be said for having drive and everything like that. But I think finding your feet with your own kind of techniques and your style. And then what I found really in the past year is basically getting out there and going to different festivals and meeting new people and networking you know I think not only does it give you drive the adrenaline from that you know and the inspiration that you get from being with like-minded people uh, is worth its weight in gold I think and you don't mean just standing you mean actually just visiting no just visiting yeah yeah like when we went to New York and you know, going to Edinburgh and things like that. And even like, you know, Woolen, even though I was so busy that I didn't get a chance to talk to a lot of people, but um, it just, it energizes you. So I would definitely say just even if you're not vending, just go. So Jenny, one of the things I'm really excited about is you are developing a new sport weight base. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so it became apparent to me that I kind of have too many fingering weights. Um, So I decided that you know, something was going to have to go. And um, although I have loved Graft and Fourply from the very beginning, it was the very first base I brought out, but it has kind of maybe had its day. Um, so I will be discontinuing that one. Um, I will be dying up the rest of my stock of that though first. So it's going to be available still for a little while. Uh, this new sport white then, I um, kind of, it's a throw up between too so uh, I'll make it have to make a decision on that uh, for a release about the autumn and um, yeah so I'm very excited about a new weight in the range and uh, when if people want to find you and engage with you as opposed to this isn't it where best can we find you um Instagram um I am at townhouse yarns on Instagram but you can also um, send me an email through my website which is townhouseyarns.com um But yeah, all social media, really. But Instagram would be the one that I would use most. But you also do collaborations with um, both indie dyers and designers as well, don't you? Yeah, so I've been um, part of the Irish Yarn Club uh, with other dyers such as Double Dye Company and um, Hedgehog Fibres. And then, yes, uh, designers as well. So um, there's been Albina, there's been Bully Wormhead, Carol Feller, Justina Lorkowska. 
And I'm afraid I'm going to miss somebody out. Our JTS knitwear. Uh, so Jennifer's used uh, my yarn with a couple of her patterns too. And there's something else in the works now that I forgot to mention, sorry, uh, for the Tits Out Collective. So um, I have sent some of the colorway to a designer who is going to release a pattern in it. Oh, very exciting. Can't believe I forgot about that. <laughs> it happens when there's lots of... Uh... When there's lots of balls on the table, it happens. There is so many balls. So many. <laughs> so many tips. <laughs> I would just like Countess is single-handedly responsible for me having to mark all these podcasts as explicit as well. <laughs> Telling people to feck off and such. <laughs> yes. Um, so again, if people can find you, all of the links will be in today's show notes um, and Townhouse Yarns uh, and both townhouseyarns.com and this is knit. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, both of those. And um, do you have your own Ravelry group? Oh, no, this is where you're going to shame me because I set it up and I don't really go into it that often. It's like, yeah, I need another week in my week. <laughs> or I need a moderator. Who wants to be my moderator on there? You heard that if you want to help Jenny with her mods, um, <laughs> get in contact. Um, and if you would like to win one of uh, Jenny's yarns, what we're going to get you to do is to pop over to the Ravelry group and leave a comment there under this week's episode, telling us what it is that you like about Ten House Yarns. And uh, Jen has very kindly offered a skein of Dane for Ply. Would you like to tell us about it? Yeah, so it's the same base that I have done the Tits Out Collective colorway in. It is a 50-50 merino and silk. And the skein that is up for grabs is a, a kind of blue and kind of neon speckled, um, lovely called Born Trippy. So that is up on the This Is Knit website. They're under the ready to ship things if you want to go and have a goo. And I'll also put it up uh, on my Instagram grid so you can see it there. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show, Jenny, and um, the best of luck with everything. I hope the expansion goes really, really well for you. Thank you, Nadia. It's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that we'll chat soon. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And please, people, if you want to find out more about Jenny, you can find uh, all the details in today's show notes. You can leave a comment and stuff like that there. I promise she will get to read it because um, I will shove it under her nose. <laughs> <laughs> I will read it. Thank you so much for joining us, Jenny. Thanks, Nadia. See you later. Hello and welcome back. I really hope that you enjoyed today's show. It would be wonderful if you could pop over to iTunes and leave a review of today's podcast episode. And if you don't listen via iTunes, then please share the episode on social media, email or Ravelry so that others can find it too. Don't forget that you can add your own questions to the interviews on this podcast by becoming a patron over on patreon.com forward slash cottage notebook. I will be back with another audio podcast episode in two weeks, but if you want more from me until then, you can find me over on Instagram as cottage notebook or in the Ravelry group as bunny T and the Ravelry group is obviously cottage notebook. Um, and if for some reason you want to see my face or what I'm working on, you can find those vlogs over on YouTube. Um, all that's left to say then is I'm your host Nadia and from the Cottage Notebook, grow, craft, love. Bye bye.